Hello everyone, welcome to Dentomedia YouTube channel. In this video, we will explain basic terminology in dental anatomy. Let's get started. Phylogenetic classification of dentition, based on succession or replacement of teeth. According to succession or replacement, the teeth can be divided into three categories, monophyodont, diphyodont, polyphyodont. Among mammals, the first two categories are found. Monophyodont teeth appear only once in lifetime. If they are lost, they are never again replaced by new ones. Examples, in some mammals, squirrel, only one set of teeth develops in their lifetime. Diphyodont type has two sets of dentition. The first temporary set of teeth is called deciduous teeth or milk teeth or lacteal teeth. They are lost and replaced by a second permanent teeth. Examples, in mammals, bats, and guinea pigs, the milk teeth are lost even before birth. Polyphyodont dentition involves teeth that are replaced continuously throughout life. It is seen in lower vertebrates which lose teeth while feeding and capturing prey and needs teeth to be replaced for survival, example, vertebrates such as dogfish, snakes, and mice. Based on the kinds of teeth found form and function of dentition. According to the form and function of teeth, there are three categories of dentition. Homodont or isodont. Specialized homodont, heterodont. Homodont or isodont dentition has teeth which are functionally and anatomically of the same type, although their size may be variable depending on the location. Example, fishes, amphibians, reptiles. Specialized homodont occurs in homodont dentition where a functional specialization is required like a venomous fang in the anterior teeth, example, venomous snakes. Heterodont dentition occurs in mammals in which there are four functionally different types of teeth, namely incisors for cutting, canines for tearing flesh and large and broad premolas and molars with a flat grinding surface. Based on the type of attachment of teeth on the jawbone. The following three types are found in vertebrates, acrodont, pleurodont, thecodont. Acrodont teeth are attached on the top surface of the jawbone. These have no roots and are attached to the edge of the jawbone by a fibrous membrane. This type of attachment is not very strong and teeth are lost easily and are replaced by new ones. Pleurodont teeth are attached on the inner side and upper side of the jawbone that brings a larger surface area of tooth in contact with jawbone and hence attachment is stronger. Thecodont dentition is found in mammals in which the root of the tooth is firmly fixed in a socket of the jawbone, making the attachment strongest in vertebrates. Dental formula The dental formula for human sapien are given in the following text where I equals incisors, C equals canines, P equals premolas and M equals molars. For deciduous teeth the formula is given below, the teeth present in deciduous dentition are incisor canine and molar, 10 teeth present in each jaw, total number of deciduous teeth are 20, for permanent teeth, the formula is given below, the teeth present in permanent dentition are incisor, canine, premola and molar, 16 teeth are present in each jaw, total number of permanent teeth are 32. Parts of a tooth each tooth has two parts crown and root separated by a cervical line or cementoenamel junction. Crown The crown is the portion of the tooth which is covered by enamel. On the basis of the position of the crown in the oral cavity, two types of crown terminologies are used. Anatomical crown, it refers to the crown, entire, which is covered by enamel, regardless of whether it is completely erupted or not. The size of the anatomical crown remains constant throughout the lifetime of the tooth, except in cases of attrition or any other physical wearing of tooth surface. Clinical crown, it refers to the crown which is visible clinically, and it is what one sees when looking into the mouth. The height of the clinical crown is determined by the position of the gingival margin, root. The portion of the tooth covered by cementum is known as the root. 
The tooth may have either a single root or multiple roots. Single roots are seen in anterior teeth, mandibular premolas, and maxillary second premolas. Multiple roots are seen in molars and premolas. In maxillary first premolas and mandibular molars, two roots are present, and in maxillary molars, three roots are present. Bifurcation or trifurcation is the term used for the division of the root into two or three segments. On the basis of whether the root is visible in the oral cavity, two types of root terminologies are used. Anatomical root. It refers to the root that is below the CEJ and is covered with cementum. The size of the anatomical root remains constant throughout the lifetime of the tooth, except in cases of resorption of the root comma. Clinical root, it refers to the part of tooth that is under the gingiva and not exposed to the oral cavity. The height of the clinical root is determined by the position of the gingival margin. Cervical line. The cervical line separates the anatomical crown from the anatomical root. It is the junction between two tissues of the tooth, enamel, and cementum, and hence is known as the cementoenamel junction or simply the CEJ. Structure of the tooth. The tooth comprises three hard tissue and one soft tissue components. The hard tissue components are enamel, dentin, and cementum. The soft tissue component is the pulp tissue. Enamel. Enamel is the hard, highly mineralized, protective, white, shiny structure covering the outermost layer of the anatomical crown, dentin. Dentin is the hard, mineralized, yellowish tissue present in both the crown and the root. It makes up the major bulk of the tooth, is present beneath the enamel and cementum and lines the pulp cavity. Cementum. Cementum is the mineralized, dull, yellowish tissue covering the outermost layer of the anatomical root extending from the cervical line. Pulp. Pulp is the soft tissue present in the central, innermost portion of the tooth called the pulp cavity. It is completely covered by the dentin layer except near the apical foramen. Supporting structures of the tooth. The supporting structures of the teeth are collectively known as the periodontium which helps in attaching the tooth to surrounding tissues as well as allowing the sensation of touch and pressure. The periodontium consists of the cementum, periodontal ligament, alveolar bone, and gingiva. Alveolar bone. The root portion of the tooth is fixed firmly within the tooth socket of the jaws called the alveolus with the help of the periodontal ligament. Periodontal ligament. Periodontal ligament fibers attached to the alveolar bone on one side and the cementum of the tooth on the other side. Gingiva. The crown portion, and sometimes part of the cervical cementum, is partly covered by the soft tissue of the mouth known as the gingiva or the gums. Surfaces of the teeth. In addition to identifying and naming teeth, it is important to name the tooth's individual surfaces. The surfaces are named according to their position in the oral cavity and also their uses. Facial surface. The surface of the tooth nearest to the cheeks or lips is referred to as the facial surface. The facial surface can be subdivided into labial surface and buccal surface. Labial surface, it is the facial surface closest to the lips and is present in anterior teeth. Buccal surface. It is the facial surface closest to the cheeks and is present in posterior teeth. Palatal surface. In the maxillary arch, the surface of the tooth closest to the palate is termed palatal surface. Lingual surface. In the mandibular arch, the surface of the tooth closest to the tongue is termed lingual surface. Proximal surface. The surface of a tooth that is towards another tooth in the dental arch is termed proximal surface. The proximal surface can be subdivided into two surfaces on the basis of position in relation to the median line of the face. Each tooth has two proximal surfaces, mesial and distal. Mesial surface, the surface that is towards or closer to the median line of the face. Distal surface, the surface that is away or distant from the median line of the face. Masticatory surface. 
The surface that aids in chewing is known as the masticatory surface. The masticatory surface is subdivided into the occlusal surface in the posterior teeth and the incisal surface in the anterior teeth. Occlusal surface, it is the chewing surface of the posterior teeth that articulates with an antagonist tooth in the opposing arch. Incisal surface, it is the cutting surface of the anterior teeth. In newly erupted teeth, the incisal surface appears rounded and narrow and is termed incisal ridge instead of incisal surface. When the incisal ridge becomes flat due to wear and tear, it is termed incisal edge. Division of the surfaces of the teeth The crowns and roots are arbitrarily divided into thirds and are named according to their location. Division of the crown into thirds The crown can be divided into thirds in three ways. Cervico-occlusally or cervico-incisally by equally spaced horizontal lines. They are divided into the following, occlusal or incisal third, middle third, cervical third. Facio-lingually. The proximal surfaces of the crown can be divided into thirds facio-lingually by equally spaced vertical lines. The divisions are as follows, facial, labial or buccal, third, middle third, palatal or lingual third. Mesiodistally, the facial and lingual slash palatal surfaces of the crown can be divided into thirds mesiodistally by equally spaced vertical lines. The divisions are as follows, mesial third, middle third, distal third. Division of the root into thirds. The root can be divided into thirds in the following three ways. Cervicopically. The divisions are as follows. Cervical third, middle third, apical third. Facio-lingually. The divisions are as follows, facial, labial or buccal, third, middle third, palatal slash lingual third. Mesiodistally. The divisions are as follows, mesial third, middle third, distal third, lines and point angles are already explained in other video, link given in description, in the next video. We will explain anatomical landmarks on the tooth surface. Subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to get latest notification. Thank you for watching.